Good afternoon, my brothers. Good afternoon. God is good. And all the time. Thank you. Thank you for that. I want to um, thank Pastor Miller for opening up the doors to this beautiful facility for us to um, be here today. Give this um, wonderful pastor a nice round of applause. That's, uh, I want to thank Oak Street Health. Uh, Brother Mark, uh, this is his second time. Um, allowing me to share his podium and his platform in order for me to speak to um, the people that he's gone before. Last time we were on the south side, and this time we're on the west side, and they say the west side is the best side. That's what they say. I want to thank all of our doctors who come out and they don't have to be here doing what they're doing, but because black lives matter. Did y'all get that? I didn't say only black lives matter. I said, but because black lives matter, there's a need and there's a sacrifice that we all make to be here before you today. Um, brother spoke on it a little bit earlier about going back to God's word and going back to God's plan. Do you know that in the beginning, there was no such thing as eating meat? In the beginning, I'm talking about the word. If you look at it, if you eat meat, that means something got to be killed in order for you to eat it, right? There was no killing in God's creation in the beginning. It wasn't until sin came in that something had to be killed to cover sin. Now, that's began the process of putting meat on the table or food on the table. Then God came back in Leviticus, the 11th chapter, and he said, I'm going I'm to give you a dietary law. I'm going to tell you what to eat, what not to eat, because I designed you and I created your body so I know what's good for you to put in your body, just like your automobile. They'll tell you what kind of gas to put into your automobile, what, what kind of oil to put into your automobile, and then you have an owner's manual in the glove department, compartment. The owner's manual for our body is that word of God, and it's called the Bible. And see, not only is it physical things that we're dealing with as far as health, but we're dealing with mental and spiritual things That's right. as far as our health also. That's right. Some of you, like this brother here, has gone through things. Because see, God will put you in a position where you be, will become the sacrifice for others. His test allowed him to be here today to have a testimony. See, your test leads to a testimony and your mess leads to a message. Everything that you're going through right now in your life, God is allowing you to go through it in order for you to get to where he wants you to be in your life. And some of you are asking the question, why me? Well, why, not, why don't you ask the question, why not me? See, you may not be the one with the answer, but you may be the one that God has been preparing all your life, he's been preparing you to reach the one who has the answer. If it hadn't have been someone who came to me in high school and said, hey, man, there's a better way of living your life. There's a better way of doing things. You don't have to pick up a knife. You don't have to pick up a gun. You don't have to pick up drugs. You don't have to get high off of anything outside of your body. You can get high off of the word of God. And I'm not coming to you from a religious perspective. I'm coming to you from a spiritual perspective. Everybody say the five elements of life. Five elements of life. Now, before I get into my um, poem and my story, I just want to talk to you about this. And I want to give you these, these arms and these tools in order to navigate through whatever it is you're going through. I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. And the fact that you're here today says that you want to work through whatever it is that you're going through. So the first element I want to talk about is earth. Everybody say earth. 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 earth means to be grounded. Earth is ground. So when you're grounded and you're humble enough to receive instruction and inspiration and motivation coming to you by someone outside of your own self being humble enough to receive it, then you can stay positive because when you plug that, that, that plug up in the wall, it has three pumps. Positive, negative, and the ground. The more you stay grounded, the more you can stay on the positive side of things. But when you start taking things into your own hands and you start saying, I don't need God no more, God will put you in a position where you got to call on his name. 
The second one is air. Everybody say air. air. Well, we know that it exists, but we can't see it. So it's spiritual. We know that God exists, but we cannot see him because he's spiritual. But we see the evidence of his existence all around us. He said, don't look at the moon and the stars and those things up in the heavens and marvel at those things. Because see, those things are the creation. The heathen or the other nations are amazed at those things. But you, Israel, and I'm calling you Israel because that's who you are. You've been called African-American, but if you research and study your history, you are the Israelites who in 70 AD was kicked out of Israel by the Roman emperor Titus or Vespasia and Titus. And you found your way on the northwest corner of Africa, which is where the slave trade came. And those African brothers and sisters who are not your people, some of them were forced to give us up into slavery. And your history is written in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. I'm talking to you, Israel. Because he said, of my people who are called by my name, everybody ain't called by the name Israel, but you are. There's something called learning something on the way to learn something. But back to air. You may not be able to see it, but it exists. You may not be able to see the answer to your question or the solution to your problem. But just like God exists and you can't see him, the answer to the question, the solution to the problem, that exists also. And all you got to have is a little bit of faith and a little bit of hope. The size of a what? Mustard seed. Mustard seed. That third one is fire. Fire represents struggle. We cook food over fire because we want to purify the food. We want to make sure the bacteria are burned out of the food. Well, you are going through what you're going through. In order to get to that next elevation of blessings. But you can't get there unless you go through this struggle that you're currently going through. And the last one is water. You put water in the bottle, the water becomes the bottle. You put water in the cup, water becomes the cup. Water is that type of thing that it has no shape or no form. But whatever environment you put it in, you're able to adapt to that environment. God said, I am that I am. I'm all in all. Any way you put me, I can thrive and I can be successful and I can succeed. But water has no shape and no form. So that means that whatever society tells you that you're supposed to be or what things are supposed to be like. Some of you here right now are not supposed to be alive or you're supposed to be locked up in prison according to what? to what society says you're supposed to be. But when you don't let society shape and mold you, and you let God shape and mold you into the person that you're supposed to be, then you can start touching people. Everybody that you encounter, you're supposed to leave something with them, and, they're supposed to, and um, you're supposed to take something away. So I'll end by saying this. My son, I lost him at the age of 15. He was diagnosed with osteosarcoma cancer at the age of 13. He did everything. He did surgeries. They removed a portion of the bone in his leg. We did chemotherapy. We did all those things that the doctor said that we were supposed to do. But God is the best Noah. He said that I came to give life so that you can have it, and you can have it more abundantly. So I have faith enough to know that death is not even the end of the stop on the train. What's more than everlasting life? So I'm using my son's death to go out here and save a life. So I'm speaking at these schools. I'm going to these juvenile detention centers. In other words, brothers and sisters, I'm not giving up. That blow that happened to me in my life was enough to make me give up was enough to make me commit suicide because I thought about it. But God has a mission and a purpose for me. And he used my son as a sacrifice so that I could go out there and be here in front of you right now today. So I want to close and to do what I was called, which is a poet, spoken word artist. This piece was a piece that I wish that I never had to write. It's called Ego. Everybody say Ego. Ego. It's an acronym that stands for easing God out. 
Hey, God. Where you at? I've been looking for you. Seems like you've been avoiding me or something. And I've been searching for you for years with no answer, just anticipation. And I've been going through this transformation. But every time I call on you, God, it's like I get put on hold. And they say that you hear all and, and that you see all, but seems like you ain't never available, God, when I call. See, Pastor, I remember it was January 91. I had just left Simeon High School, Martin Luther King, ceremony speaking. I wasn't feeling too well that day, little did I know that all the while, my appendix had been leaking. And worry you, God. Just what I thought, nowhere to be found. And if it wasn't for my son's mother convincing me to go to St. Bernard's Hospital that night, Black Ice wouldn't be here with you on the west side right now. And where you at, God, that morning when I went to work and when I got to 123rd and Kedzie, right by the cemetery, this lady ran the light. Last thing I saw, my brother was headlights. A three-car collision that almost took my life, but where were you, God? And where you at, God, when my mother was stricken with cervical cancer? She's been going to church serving him since before I was born, and we both called on you, and, and you still didn't answer. Come on, God, this is my mother. Tell me, is this how he treats all his sons and his daughters? And where you at, God, that day my son died? I sat there at the University of Chicago and I watched them come back twice. You could have intervened. You could have saved his life, but, but where were you, God? And where were you at, God, when? Okay, my son, I've heard enough. Now I know the times for you have been rough, but son, where's your faith? Seems like you only seek my face when you need me. For I am a full-time God, my son. Do you really believe in me? Well, if so, then you would know that I am the creator of the universe. All that you see from the highest heights of heaven to what you have discovered beneath the earth. See, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of Moses, Lot, and David. I am the one who made Solomon wise. I put Noah in the ark before the waters could rise. I gave Samson the strength to destroy the Philistines with no eyes. I am that smooth stone that David slung that smoked Goliath in the head. The cracks that crumbled the walls of Jericho. The same one that rose Lazarus from the dead. I am the blood of the lamb of the doorpost that kept the children of Israel safe from harm. Even the staff in Moses' his right arm. And I gave it the power to split the Red Sea in half. Shall I go on? Please forgive me, Father. He had the nerve to sell me, tell me, no, son. I already have. But see, like Jonah, you've been running from your mission. I've been trying to reach you and speak to you for years, but your ego just wouldn't let you listen. When your appendix was spreading poison through your body, I was the voice that spake to your son's mother warning you, and do you remember what you promised me, my son? Yes, Lord, I do. I promise you that if you allow me to make it through, then I would turn my life over to you. But what did you do? You continued to play. So I spoke to you again in the form of a three-car collision, but I allowed you to walk away that day. And have you ever asked yourself the question why the accident was by a grave site? I was showing you that the road that you were traveling on ended at the cemetery if you didn't change your life. But you still didn't listen. And as for your mother's cervical cancer, I am the reason why your mother's cancer is in remission. And I know your son's gone. But his body was sick, so I relieved him of his pain and I called him home. And yet you still, I stayed by your side all those moments that you felt alone, yet you still rejected my truth. If you only could have put your ego to the side and Listen to all those whom I sent to you. Lord, you mean to tell me while all the while I was waiting to hear from you? You were sending me messages to all those whom I rejected? Yes, my son, this is true. 
And instead of focusing on the guides, submit to the truth that you find inside. For Satan is the one who subtracts and divides, but he is the one who adds and multiplies. I'm telling y'all, he opened my eyes. And so to those of you who can't accept the truth, because your ego won't allow you to accept who the truth is coming through. Take this as a lesson. Because see, God just ain't using these politicians today because asking some of them questions is just like asking blind men for directions. But it's the truth that counts. And see, men, in this case, my ego just wasn't my ego. But my ego was easing. God, out. Thank y'all so much. Yeah.